Well, a group of past and present politicians has been formed to advocate for a no vote in this year's Voice to Parliament referendum. The members include Northern Territory Senator Jacinta Nampajimpa and Price and former ALP president turned Liberal candidate Warren Mundine. The group's running on the slogan, Recognise a Better Way, saying it supports constitutional recognition, but not a voice to Parliament. Well, we're joined now by Warren Mundine. Good morning to you. Welcome to News Breakfast. Uh, thank you, Lisa. I just want to touch on that story. You would have been listening to our reporter in Alice Springs and the meeting last night. Quite a few of the messages we've been getting from Alice Springs is the feeling that if there was a voice to Parliament, we wouldn't be seeing what we're seeing in Alice Springs at the moment. Well, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised, you know, listening to that report about the anger and that that's uh, happening. And, uh, and we're, ho we're hoping that, uh, you know, that will cool down and that and some really good stuff can come out of it. Look, quite frankly, I think that's just a furphy. Uh, because if they really believe that, the government really believed that, and the minister and, and, and Marion Swimgore, the member for Lingari, has said it, then they'd, they'd actually uh, uh, legislate for the voice now if they, if they thought that was going to be the panacea for fixing everything. Uh, look, I've, I've never supported the idea of having, you know, committees sitting in Canberra, uh, having talk fest and being advisory groups. Uh, and if, if I'm to believe what the, uh, uh, the government is saying, then they're saying purely this is a, an advisory group. They will just talk about issues that, are, are, that affect Aboriginal people. Well, you know, I don't know any issues because they don't affect Aboriginal people. I'm, you know, I'm a citizen. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are citizens of this country. Country. So every law, every part of the constitution affects us. So you know, so I just don't understand this. I just, I, they just, if they really believe what they believe, get on with it. But to me, it's a waste of millions and millions of dollars that could be spent on the ground and working with those communities out there to, to fix the problems. I want to put something else to you that Noel Pearson said over the last week, that of the unintended consequences perhaps of a no vote this year in Australia. He suggests that reconciliation would die with a failed referendum. Do you worry about what your actions might do? Well, my actions won't do that at all, so I don't worry about it. Uh, and, and the actions of, of the yes vote, uh, they won't be uh, the cause of any problems about that. This is that we're a liberal democracy. People are allowed to put their views forward. Look, that is just, to me, is just nonsense. I've travelled around this country uh, weekly, I, I, and that's part of my business in, in my private life, and I haven't met anyone really who hasn't got goodwill towards Aboriginal people and resolving the issues that we're having in this country and moving forward. So uh, look, just because the vote may go down, I think that's just a scare tactic by the Yes campaign uh, saying that reconciliation is dead is nonsense. Uh, I'm committed to reconciliation. I have a long track record in working in that area. In fact, my niece is actually the CEO of Reconciliation Australia and, uh, and we've, as a family and, and many other people in the community have made that quite clear. I think uh, in a few of the comments that's coming out by Noel Pearson is, is concerning when, you, when, he, when he starts, you know, uh, abusing people, which he has publicly, and when he starts making silly comments like that. You've also yesterday uh, suggested that migrant groups should be included or new Australians be included in a preamble to the Constitution along with Indigenous Australians. Why? Well, because uh, w when you're talking about a preamble, you're talking about the recognition of, of this great country. And, and we are a great country. Do we have problems? Well, of course we have problems. We just heard it on the news just about, you know, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, but, we're, but we are moving in the right direction. You know, I was born in 1956. I spent the first 13 years of my life under the New South Wales Aborig Aborigines Protection Act and the New South Wales Aborigines Welfare Board. And they, they just managed our lives from from daybreak to day the sundown uh, that those all those laws are gone and and we and we're having a tremendous uh, support throughout the community for getting aboriginals into jobs uh, getting them into into uh, into education yeah but we're talking about the migrants and this idea of sort of combining them in because 800 different delegates from ethnic communities actually supported the idea of a voice so i wonder why you're suggesting something that the community itself is not asking for 
Well, because I, I, you know, there's, you know, my kids, uh, you know, they don't ask for uh, uh, things, and I give them to them because I want to recognise all Australians. I want to recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islands and the magnificent 60,000 years of our history. Uh, I want to recognise you know, the, the, the last 200 years, 200 something years of that history and the issues and problems that happened there. And I want to recognise people like refugees and immigrants who have fled from overseas, from wars, from discrimination, from, uh, from horrible uh, dictators and that. And they come to Australia to, to, to enjoy the freedom and build the future for themselves, but they not only built a future for themselves, they actually built a future for all Australians by, work, by getting out there, working hard and contributing to our great nation. So I want to recognise them, I want to recognise every Australian. Uh, and, and the Constitution uh, virtually does that now. And in fact, anyone who says that Aboriginals aren't in the Constitution, they're telling a furphy. And, they, and another furphy, they're telling you if Aboriginals haven't got a voice, then they haven't been observing since 1973 when we've had a number of bodies that have been voiced, which have been advisory bodies, except for ADSIC, which had uh, monetary powers as well. Uh, and yet they all, all fail. And so I, I haven't heard a, a, logi a, a logical answer to the thing, how is this advisory body uh, going to make a difference? It's going to be a long, mm -hmm. big, important nine months. Warren Mundine, thanks very much for your time. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa.